Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Wendy Dillard here. Today is Monday, March 19th, 2018. Your second daily dose of happy for the day. We hope your Monday is going just as well as it did last week. In fact, even like the week before and the week before that, because all Mondays are wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> At least well, we is like there any so. day of the week that doesn't have the potential for wonderful? Not really. Not. <laughs> no, but, but Mondays need special tender loving care because they really get abused. I mean, they get so beat up by people saying, oh, I hate Mondays. I can't stand the first day of the week. I can't wait for Friday. And Mondays get a bad rap. So I think they just need a little tender loving care. <laughs> okay. I'll give you that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how are you doing? How are things going? Oh, things are going great. And I have a, a really great, uh, well, fun, long, expanded curiosity-seeking, thought-provoking update on Project X. Well, then we may um, not get to the Law of Attraction book. We may just be on Project X. Who knows? But, hey, that's okay. We're okay with that. <laughs> we may. But before we go there, tell me, you know, with your weekend and all the things you had planned. It was a good um, weekend. Any wins? Well, yeah, all of Sunday was a win because we went up to visit our friends at Mount Snow, Vermont, who uh, – Louise has known since she used to live there back in the early 80s. So, I mean, these are long-standing friends. And we had a great time. We went for a sleigh ride. We haven't been in a sleigh ride in oh, ages. It was like, it's been like 15 years since the last time we did it with them, actually. And it was a blast. It was so much fun. So, I'm so ignorant because I live where it's way too warm most of the time. Like, what is, explain what a sleigh ride is like. Is it horse and buggy drawn? Is it... It, it's I mean, a, how does that happen? Well, there, there were about 15 of us for the sleigh ride, so you wouldn't be able to get into a buggy. It would be a little bit too small. But what they have is they have a long sled, essentially. It's it's a uh, like a large trailer, but instead of on wheels, it's got runners on the bottom. And everybody piles into this trailer, and they have some Belgian draft horses to, to pull the thing. These are like really, really big horses. I mean, each one weighs a t over a ton, and they're just all muscle. And, the, I mean, these guys can pull gigantic amounts of weight i mean they they, they pulled us around like we we're nothing <laughs> it was amazing huh. <laughs> but uh yeah and and uh the uh, sleigh ride was on a farm called adam's farm in mount snow vermont it's just down the road from the mountain where the ski resort is and it was uh basically just they they, they take us up uh the, the 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 farm is not a flat farm it's on on a hill it's on a hillside sort of the north side of, the, of that little hill there and so they take us up the hill to a cabin they have up there where they warm us up with hot chocolate and so forth and tell us stories about the farm and then take us back down and it was just it was a fun time to be out because they had had a lot of snow lately i think they have something like two and a half feet on the ground right now so they're in they're pretty good shape from a snow perspective so is a sleigh ride like a hay ride yeah but kind of it's like a hay ride snow? without without uh, wheels it's a, it's a hay ride on on runners rather than wheels okay because I've been on hay rides before, yeah. but I don't think I've ever been on a sleigh ride, but it's, that sounds charming. It is. It's fun. It's really nice. And, and there were a couple people who had never been to any of the winter sport type things, and, and uh, so we were you know, telling stories to them and so forth. That was fun. It, it was just a fun afternoon. Cool. Yeah. It was really cool. So that's what I did this weekend. What did you do this weekend? <laughs> well, okay. So my weekend... Really is is my Project X update. Oh, okay. I didn't really know it was until you know I've told you I have my friend Keisha who's staying with me, right. and right before the show, I just said, "Gotta ask a question," and I did a brain dump, and she gave me the insights that she was getting, which really resonated with me, and I was like, "Wow!" So I literally have had something going on for four days. Wow! Not realizing that all the pieces and parts were kind of all part of one. OK, so, you know, I tend to tell things in sequential stories, so that's what I'm going to do. But I'm going to tell you the end and then I'll go back to the beginning. So <laughs> where I am today is like I have this sensation throughout my body of like huge anticipation, excitement. Um, I, I've done stage work before and it's kind of like the butterflies in your stomach right before you go on stage, hoping everything will go well. Hmm. But the difference is it's not butterflies in my stomach. I feel like I feel lots of um, energy coursing through my body, coursing through my veins. Like my blood is moving at a faster pace than normal. Um, and the other sensation is having a really hard time staying focused. 
Um, I've had lots of things at my job today where, you know, it required multitasking. Well, to me, that's like, duh, that's every day where I get disrupted in the middle of doing something and I have to do something else and then I jump back and forth. That's, that's my life. And I'm really good at it. But today, it's like every time I got distracted, I would sense it in my body like, Ugh, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> I mean, which is, like I said, really unusual for me. Yeah. And I might be able to get through it, but I'd have to like go focus, Wendy. Come on, you've got to focus, focus, focus. <laughs> Talk about manually trying to get myself to focus. This was a really big ordeal. So, and I was able to see that I only had like one 45 minute slot in the whole day where I was talking with someone on a more social level that was like easy and didn't, and it was non-stressful. So anyway, that's kind of where I landed when I went to Keisha and was kind of trying to say, I got to understand what this is. Cause it's like, ah, it, it was, it's just really kind of hard to deal with because mm-hmm. it's so, mm-hmm. it's so different. But the fact that it's so distracting to my normal way of being able to just live my life is kind of freaky. So now I'm going to go backwards. And Friday, at the end of the show, you know, you and I usually talk afterwards and debrief. Right. And I told you, I said, you know, I don't even know if I was present or in my body. Right. I remember. Yeah. You saying that? Mm-hmm. Yep. And, you know, I just thought it was just one of these things. And I remember saying to you, maybe it was because of what I ate before and... You know, right. maybe it didn't mix well with me or whatever. Yeah. Well, now I'm thinking it had nothing to do with that. Um, because how I feel today is very familiar. It's very much like how I felt on Friday, which I feel kind of spacey. My head feels spacey and fuzzy. So anyway, Friday night, you know, I'm by myself at the house and I'm watching some TV and... I was watching a show, can't even remember now what it was, watching something that kind of had a sad tone to it. And I kind of noticed that I was feeling really sad. But I had a sensation that it wasn't because I was watching that show. In other words, that was not the catalyst for me feeling this way. I just happened to notice it because the TV show is that way. And normally, I can watch a show even if it's sad and not have it move me if I choose not to. But instead, I just felt this overwhelming sadness, kind of like a grieving. And I was asking, what is this about? And I wasn't really getting any solid answers or any answers. It was just, you know, what I do in my life. I I let myself feel whatever I feel. I don't try to resist it. I don't go, oh, no, I'm feeling sad. That's a bad thing. That's not law of attraction. I shouldn't go there. (laughs) Like, no, if I'm feeling sad, I just let myself feel sad. And I felt as though I wanted to have a really good cry, but no tears came out. And I knew that if my eyeballs wanted to let out some tears, I was willing to go there because I wanted to see where this would take me. Mm -hmm. And nothing really came of it, except I kind of stayed in this kind of sobering, somber, melancholy, sadness place. And so then um, I went to sleep. Woke up on Saturday, still kind of felt a little in that sadness place. And I went, this is interesting. And then I started feeling a little irritable. Like, this is interesting. Hmm. Now, anyone who's been listening to this show for any length of time knows, because Walt calls me this, but I call me this too. I'm pretty Pollyanna. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty buoyant and happy and, you know, la, 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 la most of the time. But I was not feeling that way on Saturday. I was kind of a little agitated and a little, not bad agitated, but just like not quite on my normal game. So Sunday comes around. And what I noticed that morning is all of a sudden I felt the word disappointment come to me. Hmm. Who knows? Maybe it's Saturday. Yeah, because it was in response to the sadness I had experienced. And I got the word disappointment. And I went, huh. Now, this is why I know it has to do with Project X. Because Project X is my deliberate desire to manifest something that has a whole lot of meaning to me. And 
all of a sudden I went, oh my God, what if it doesn't happen? And the level of disappointment equals the amount of sadness and grieving that I was experiencing the night before. And it was interesting because it came to me through feelings, but not through my normal channel of like words and understanding. But I was grieving the potential disappointment that what if I made this whole uh, whole thing up? What if law of attraction's not all that it's cracked up to be? What if I'm just hoping on a prayer that I want the culminate, I want the manifestation of Project X so bad that I'm just a crazy loon? <laughs> and what if it's not going to happen at all? Now, that should be big enough reason if anyone's been listening over a course of time, since I talk about this almost every day with excitement and enthusiasm and, and just a desire to have this thing manifest. Can you imagine the disappointment if it doesn't? Yeah, that'd be pretty deep. And that's what I was feeling. And that scared me. I mean, big time scared me. And I went, I don't even know what to do with this. And so I just kind of, I wasn't wallowing in it. I let myself feel it in order to gain whatever messages there could be for me within it. And so that, that was Saturday, that was Friday night because I remember saying to myself, okay, I've had stuff like this come up before and I will just clear the, I'll clear the negative energy. I'll get to the bottom of whatever this disappointment is and I'll move to the other side. And I asked myself the question before I went to bed, what does my inner being know about this that I don't? Because my inner being would not be in grief. My inner being would not be focused on disappointment. That's a good question. My inner, being knows some, my inner being knows something I don't. And I didn't know what it was. And that was the question I asked before I went to bed. With the full awareness that I'm open to receiving during the night and or in the morning. So the next day came and I didn't really have an answer. I didn't, my inner being wasn't going, oh, this is what we think about this. It wasn't one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of started doing my own process, asking questions about the disappointment and how, because I know now this is personal to me. This may not be anybody else, but I had a number of episodes throughout my childhood, teenage years, early 20s when something would be promised within my family, something that just excited me to like no end. And it ended with, oh, sorry, not going to happen. And I got my hopes dashed like nobody's business. I was so, I felt so distraught because I felt like I had been promised this. My family promised this to me and my siblings. And they didn't have a good explanation as to why it didn't happen, except, oh, well, we changed our mind or, oh, well, we don't have the money after all. And I remember thinking, then why did you build it up? Like, this is such <laughs> yeah. a fantastic thing. If you even thought there could be a slight possibility it wasn't going to happen, it's like, don't you know what kids do? We get excited because even though it wasn't Christmas, it felt like Christmas to us mm -hmm. when they promised us something fabulous. So... Anyway, I had a series of those things in a number of my years. And so I was aware that when the word disappointment came to me Friday night, I knew what it was attached to. It was attached to this series of disappointments in my life. And I thought to myself, I thought I was over that. I thought I'd cleared the energy of that. But I guess not because it's here. And what you know is how you know if you've cleared the energy is those things don't come up anymore. That's well, right, yeah. this one did. So I spent Saturday, you know, I went and I had my massage and I had some shopping to do. And, you know, while I'm out and about, I'm just asking questions and I'm listening to Abraham in the car. And I'm just kind of letting whatever happens float into my awareness. And I started thinking a little bit more about this disappointment thing. And for whatever reason, my quote, normal process, that I use to ask questions and get clarity on, you know, things like that when I wanted to deactivate that wasn't coming to me. And so I said, all right, I'm willing to do something different. What else can I do to clear this energy? And I kind of got, think about all the things where that's not true, meaning where I, I wanted something and I didn't end up disappointed. 
I went, huh, never done that before. In other words, where you got it, wherever it was. Yeah, so I started thinking about so many things in my life that have manifested where I got exactly the fulfillment of what I wanted and then some and have been completely delighted. And I went, huh, well, then it's not true that I will be disappointed every single time. Because I really was holding that as like my truth that, oh, I'm always disappointed every time I want something. It never happens. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, that was pretty fascinating that I was able to even let myself go there. Because that is so not true. It's like holding onto a trump card that isn't actually a trump card, but it feels like it. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was like, because I even was hearing in my head, you never get what you want. (laughs) That's not true. I most of the time get what I want. (laughs) But I was living in this lie in my head. Like that was the automatic default positioning that my brain went to. You never get what you want. And then I heard something that really got to me. This is why you don't ask for anything anymore. This is why you don't dream. This is why you don't put yourself out there. Because you know if you do, you won't get it. Hmm. Whoa. And I'll tell you, there was a part of that I really resonated with. Because I haven't put myself out there. I mean, I don't generally just say, I want this and I'm going to go for it. But that's what Project X represents to me. And I remember telling you and the listeners at the beginning, this is new for me. Even though I've been using Law of Attraction for years, how I've been using it is more about what's already in my world to improve it, to enhance it, to make it better. But I hadn't in the past just said, I want this. And then put all my eggs in that basket like I'm going for it. Because to do that is one scary proposition for me. Mm -hmm. Sure. And when I got this phrase, this is why you don't want. This is why you don't like desire things. I totally got it. And that's I knew that was part of Project X. Because Project X is defying the fact that I stopped asking for things a long, long time ago. Because when I did, got disappointed. If I asked for some new clothes, my siblings got new clothes, but I didn't. Oh. It's kind of like, well, you're the oldest, you can understand, and they're clamoring louder, and we only have X amount of dollars, which is just a month enough to take care of them, but there won't be anything left over for you. Wow. And I'm like, oh. Okay. I was kind of the, sin- I mean, this is going to make it sound horrible because it really wasn't this bad, but I really related to Cinderella feeling like she was put in a little corner and she had to like do all the chores while the stepsisters got to just be completely arrogant and do whatever the heck they wanted. And <laughs> well, hello. <laughs> Not- I mean, that sounds very reasonable given what you just said. <laughs> yeah. And, and remember that anything I'm saying This is how it has been blown up in my emotions. Oh, okay. This is how it has felt to me. It didn't mean that my parents were bad people or that they did. It doesn't even mean they did anything wrong by me. But these are the meanings that I gave to things. You know, and I could be Mm -hmm. pretty maudlin when I felt like it. I could be really depressing and melancholy when I wanted to go there. Um, And like, I don't know if you know the musical Into the Woods. I but don't really know it's it. Like, it's this compilation that Steve, Stephen Sondheim did of like Cinderella, the baker's wife, um, Little Red Riding Hood, and Jack and the Beanstalk, all put together in one musical. And okay. the first half, the first half is really adorable. It's just it's all four different vignettes, if you will. And there's a slight thing where they the different characters intertwine, but nothing major. Well, the second half. Is kind of like what happens ever after. You know, there's happily ever after. Well, okay. nobody ever talks about what is ever after. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And all of those characters intertwine and things like you wouldn't imagine actually happened. Well, one of the stories in there is Cinderella. And so I was really relating to Cinderella's character yet again. <laughs> hmm. How she was put off to the wayside while her arrogant sisters got everything they wanted. Um, but then, of course, she eventually ends up with the prince, but in, into the woods, she ends up 
rejecting the prince, which is really interesting. Oh. But anyway, <laughs> but what was interesting, again, I was back in that energy. And, you know, I really want to talk in this conversation about the energies of what I have been experiencing. And so between Friday night and Saturday and Saturday night, I felt like I had been through the ringer emotionally. And by the time Sunday showed up, somehow it was like the clouds had parted. I had processed enough stuff. I knew that when I was going through like the ugh on Saturday night, I recognized, no, I haven't always been disappointed. It's not like I never get what I want. And it is okay to want. And I had this strong desire. I'm going to want, want, want. And I'm going to get what I want because I always get what I want. And I just started rampaging the excitement and the power behind that desire and that idea. So by the time I wake up Sunday, I felt much more empowered. I was in a much better place. Yesterday just flowed beautifully for me. And near the evening, I remember I was standing in the kitchen. I was filling up my water glass. And I was thinking about the dates. And, you know, I've talked about April 1st. I had, I got, I didn't say April 1st. I was putting out the end of June to be the um, manifestation date for Project X. And I know my inner being told me April 1st. Whatever that means, I don't really know, except that I knew I was to move my end date from June 30th and move it forward. And I wasn't sure if April 1st really was that new target date but there's something significant about April 1st. Hopefully something significant other than April Fool's Day. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that, but yes, I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking about the calendar last night while I was filling my water glass. And I was like, wow, I'm two weeks out from April 1st. Two weeks out. And all of a sudden, this thought ran across my head. I say that literally, like I literally saw it inside my head like ticker tape. I just saw it run across my head. And the phrase was, it could come this week. And it was like startling. And I went, it, what? Huh? <laughs> it could come this week. It could come this week. It could come tomorrow. I'm like, oh, my God. Mm. And it was like all of a sudden the realness of the embodiment of this manifestation hit me in a reality way like I hadn't experienced. Like, it could come tomorrow, which is today. And I went, whoa. Because I don't know when it's going to come, but it's going to come, whether it comes from an email, a phone call, an in-person visit, I'm out at the grocery store and meet someone. It's like, whatever this is, it's going to be somehow I'm going to connect to something new that I couldn't have known until I made the connection. And I went, wow, that's freaky. So that's how I ended. That's how I was positioned before I went to bed last night. So last night, I did wake up two times to go to the bathroom. And the only reason that's significant, because nobody needs to know my bathroom schedule. <laughs> I should hope is, not. <laughs> <laughs> is that before I'd wake up and after I'd try to go back to sleep, I was so aware of scenarios where, remember how I've talked about for Project X to happen, another door, for, first there's a door that has to close. Mm -hmm. My dreams, which could have been all night long or, you know, in dreamland, it could have been three minutes, who knows. But, in, but before and after each one of those times I woke up that I was aware of, I was so aware of dreams I was having that represented the closing of the door. I mean, so real. I was even having a conversation with somebody that I really haven't connected with in years. And I, I could see his face clearly, his expression. I saw what he was wearing. And I normally don't have dreams that are recallable to me to, with that level of detail. Then I said something to him about how I was moving into this new thing in my life and that I was leaving this old thing. And he got up and he hugged me. And I was like, wow. Mm. And that was so real to me. And when I woke up this morning, I was so, so aware that the whole night was filled with dreams 
of this door closing. This door is closing. I was having conversations. I was sending emails. I was doing calendaring. All, every single thing was representing the closing of the door. And I was like, whoa, fascinated because it's never felt that real to me. Mm. And then mm. I was reminded it could be today. <laughs> it's coming this week. It could even be today. So then I start to go through my day and I'm just noticing this sense of my head is spacey and, and I'm not able to like stay focused. And I've got this, this energetic stuff just like blocked inside of me, um, just coursing through my veins. And so now I take you back to before the show when I said, Keisha, can, can I ask a question? And what was so funny is I talked for 10 minutes and I went, I know I started with, can I ask a question? But I gave you the whole backstory first. <laughs> um, and I said, the question is, could all this stuff that I'm feeling in my body be connected to all the stuff that I've gone through over the weekend? And if so, what, any idea what it means? And she looked at me and she said, oh, yeah, I'm getting that you're walking into a space that you've never been in before. And it's uncomfortable because you've never experienced it. But basically, you're walking through a door you've never walked through. You're expanding yourself and allowing yourself to experience something you've never allowed yourself to experience before. And when she said that, I had goosebumps. And she goes, me too, full body chills. <laughs> it's like, wow. And so it was just an acknowledgement that all this stuff that's going through my body, I didn't realize that these four days have actually been connected as I've been processing energetically. And that's the key. This is like an energy process, mm -hmm. something outside of my normal awareness. Because it wasn't like I did processes, wasn't like I was doing therapy, wasn't like I was doing a law of attraction thing, even though all of those things apply. Sure. I was just going through the weekend and it all felt unusual. But what I, one of the things I do know as a, as a life coach is whenever you're in the process of manifesting something, whatever has stopped it or kept it from flowing through into your experience has got to come up energetically and be moved out of the way in order for the manifestation to take place. And so the, one of the huge awarenesses I have is that whole thing about disappointment. That has been a really huge factor in my life. And I, that was a big, huge thing on, in the middle of the road, if you will. Mm -hmm. That had to be moved out of the way for Project X to fully manifest. And I remember asking myself questions Saturday night, like, do you really believe what you really believe? Are you really a product of what you believe? And I'm like, I, I answered myself back. I said, yes, I know what I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. I know what I know. Project X is manifesting one way or another. I'm not making this stuff up. I've had too many days worth of evidence of information coming to me that I'm not making up because I know when I make stuff up and this ain't it. <laughs> and so it's like it centered me back in my body to go, yes, I know what I know. Project X is on its way. However it shows up is the beautiful unfolding of how it shows up. But here's something really fascinating. Oftentimes, when we talk about manifesting something, you know, with the law of attraction or being deliberate creators, we think about contrast as a bad thing. And we give it this moral word, bad, and we call it bad, and we want to get over it, and we <laughs> yeah, want to move right. beyond it. But I've had this illuminating awareness over the weekend, kind of separate from this, and yet it fits into this. That the things that we call contrast can, in many circumstances, be the path of least resistance to get us to where we're desiring to go. But because we tend to resist contrast when it shows up, we call it bad. And what I was experiencing, like when, even when I said I was going through the sadness, and I wasn't going, ooh, bad, sadness is bad, I have to find a way to get out of it, because we all, I think you know, 
if I want to feel happy, I know how to flip the switch and go there. Oh, yes. But I wasn't doing that because I wasn't labeling this feeling of sadness as bad. Instead, I was being curious. And I was letting myself feel it because I know every feeling we have has within it a message. Don't know what the message is unless you feel it. And you're open to receiving what the message might be. Very true. And I allowed myself to feel the sadness and the grieving. And what I can see now is it was also a releasing of the disappointment, active vibration that I had had in my life for many, many years that had not allowed me to fully let into my life the things I really desired because there was this active vibration of being disappointment or being disappointed that I won't get what I really want. Mm -hmm. Sure. I get it. And so I'm truly grateful for letting myself just go there. And I know you and I, Walt, have talked about doing a show on the five steps. Yes. <laughs> and I'm pretty, I'm pretty close to being ready to do that because oh, I went back and I, I found the CD of Abrahams that literally diagnoses the five steps. I just need to transcribe it, and then, then we'll talk about it. And by the way, so people know what she's talking about. Normally with uh, Abraham, we're always thinking about uh, three pieces to it. There's the, the law of attraction itself. There's the law of creation and the law of allowing. But uh, what Wendy's been learning from, from very recent uh, CDs of Abraham workshops is that there are actually two more steps that are involved. So that's what we're talking about. Because mm-hmm. step one is you ask. And ask comes simply because you live life and contrast happens. And whatever contrast happens, there's an immediate rocket of desire that goes off into the stratosphere where your inner being lovingly grabs a hold of it, says, got it. I have it. I'm holding on to it until you're ready for it. And so that's step two is where your inner being holds it. That's like you asked, now it's answered. Inner being says, got it, I got the answer. Step three is just getting into a state of allowing where we can be in a state of receptivity where we're no longer focused on the contrast and the thing that doesn't feel good because we found a way to pivot our experience and our thoughts and our focus to what we desire. And step four and five, those are the ones that are a little have been a little bit fuzzy the way it's explained. But the bottom line is that, and we'll go into greater depth another time, but just to kind of give you a preview, step four and five is where you have mastered steps one through three. And you have an awareness and understanding that when you start to experience contrast again, it's not the same as when you used to be in step one and you grieved about it and were fussing and fuming and like, "Ah, I hate this thing. Instead, it's what I was experiencing this weekend. Yes, I was going through something that was unpleasant, and I was feeling this grief and sadness and and just melancholy, but instead of judging it as bad and wrong, I embraced it and looked toward what can it offer me? What can it bring to me? And see, this is what has opened me up to a greater understanding of, hmm, I wonder if, and I didn't know this then, I was just asking this question on Saturday. I wonder if this thing that I've been experiencing that's not pleasant is because this was the path of least resistance. This was the easiest thing to help me to release this thing that's been a boulder in the way of manifestation. Quite possibly. I think there's also perhaps another piece of that puzzle, too, because over the last, I don't know, week, 10 days or something like that, you've been talking about how you're a doer and you need to do and you there was nothing to do and you kept putting in you know putting out requests or putting in requests to your inner being say well what do i do next and they say nothing and and you just keep looking for different things to do i wonder if your experience the last 4 days are kind of tied to like an answer to that question i would say yes um because another piece that reminded me of something i hadn't even thought to say um i was on saturday while i was kind of in the uh, I was trying to anything to distract from where I was because I didn't know what to do with it. Mm. Um, And I thought, you know, I don't even know if I'm in a receptivity mode to be able to receive. So let's just distract and see if I can find some other place to be so that the answers can flow. 
So I started asking questions about another area of my life. And it was one that I had talked to you about offline a while ago. And I just said, nope, not ready to go there yet. I'm going to wait until Project X manifests. And then when Project X manifests, then I'll have the mental space and capacity to really start focusing on the next thing. Okay. And as I was recalling that to myself Saturday night, I got this, no, focus on it now. Oh. And I went, okay, that came with a lot of strength. Hmm. <laughs> Especially focus considering you, you weren't getting any other answers. Now all of a sudden you got this big answer. You got to pay attention to that one. Yeah. And, and I get it on a completely different subject. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I've always been a, let me do one thing well, let me get it to completion, and then I'll start another something. And then this understanding came to me. So we've told you you have nothing to do. There's no action items to do right now on this. So we're going to put you on another project. <laughs> <laughs> so you have something to focus on, some, which is, to me, something to do. Right. And it's working towards the next ask or the next big some something I want to manifest, but at least it'll take your mind off of Project X, because Project X is in, it's in the works, it's coming, it's on its way. And I was like, holy cow. And I just, I had this sense of, I must be on some kind of advanced course or something, <laughs> because this feels really big, and like a lot is being asked of me, but I'm like, it's okay, I'll do it, I'm well, happy to. Welcome to graduate school. Yeah. That's exactly kind of how I felt, Law of Attraction <laughs> Graduate School. <laughs> so I will tell you, since we, since we started the podcast today, the racing feeling of all this stuff coursing through my body has shifted. Oh. And when I paid attention to my body and I was aware that it had changed, I asked the question while I was still talking. Um, how did that happen? And I got you're moving because like while I'm talking right now, I'm moving, I'm pacing. And because I'm moving and you can't see it, but my arms are like, I'm being very demonstrative as I've been talking. Hmm. So my arms are flailing and I got the energy needed to move. And so I've been moving it. <laughs> Uh -huh. And I really was kind of sedate most of the weekend because I was kind of in a maudlin mood and I was kind of a couch potato for a good portion of it. And I guess the energy didn't have the ability to move because I wasn't in movement. <laughs> well, movement certainly does have the ability to, to at least, not at least, to, to loosen us up both physically and mentally and emotionally. And I, I suspect yeah. that for you, the, the physical motion also translate into emotional um, energy, if you will. Mm -hmm. But there's also actual real energy that pulsates through us. And sometimes energy can get stuck or it, it wants to move more. But if our body is the conduit through which it needs to move and we're still, it doesn't move very well. So the traffic light has to turn really from red to green. <laughs> I'm sorry, say that again? So the traffic light has to turn from red to green. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it just reminded me, I said that there was like a 45-minute call I was on today where I wasn't feeling this. Right. And it just dawned on me, I was walking the whole time during that call. Uh -huh. So I was not still. And the rest of the day, I'd been sitting in my chair, you know, behind a computer. And that's when all this pulsation was going through my body. So it wasn't getting the movement that it needed. It's interesting that I had a massage on Saturday, too, because mm. that is movement. Yeah. And so I didn't feel this pulsation on Saturday. But it came back again today. So maybe there was enough body motion through, thank you, Stephanie, who does my massages, um, to get things going. But... You know, I, I'm not saying that I'm coming to the show with a whole bunch of answers, but I wanted to express my experience because law of attraction shows up in so many different ways. I mean, how we experience it is, is very different per person. Um, and, and per incident. I, and per incident, yeah. And where I am right now, I'm willing to acknowledge 
I have a huge ask. I, and I almost, it's almost a demand, not in an ugly way, but like when I say demand, I mean like, and it's coming. Mm. Like there's no way on earth that Project X is not going to happen in my life because Project X is what I want. Project X is what I'm going to get. And that's the exact same energy that I've had when I got a house, when I got a car. Um, it, it's like, oh, I've, I've manifested that way before. I know what that looks like and feels like. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, and right now in the pit of my stomach, there's like this solidness that almost said the word yes to me. A like, yep, solidness. Right. A solidness. I've not heard that before. Feels solid. Yeah. Like there's a solid, yeah, it just, all of a sudden my, my stomach went from, you know, diaphragm going in and out to it locked hmm. with a solid, you know, like if you could picture you holding your fist and going, yes, that's kind of the feeling that came to me. Hmm. Like, yeah, it's not a lighthearted, oh, I hope Project Death happens. <laughs> happens. No, I asked, it's given. It's done. I'm receiving it. Mm -hmm. Period. End of report. Got the t-shirt. Yeah. That's the printers. <laughs> <laughs> Just as long as the check's not in the mail. That's all I ask. But <laughs> that's really quite something. Tell you, I mean, I, that, just telling that story has expended a lot of energy. And I feel like a lot of movement happened and there was a lot of release and a lot of declaration. And well, I don't know, curious, what did it feel like, sound like? What are your thoughts, impressions? Well, that's why curious. I was asking about the, uh, um, the stuff you've gone through the last, I don't know, week, 10 days or so before the last four day period where you know you were you were the doer looking to do something and you couldn't find anything to do and it was a little frustrating and every time you asked nope there's nothing more to do i i'm really thinking this is the universe not only giving you something to do but giving you a way to uh, how do you describe it to therapeutically let go of the driving need to do something about project x mhm mm i would totally agree I think and that's even what's happened. as a I don't know. What, what did I say I was going to call the next one? Um, Project Y? I don't know. Boring. Project Z. I like that one better. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I want to call it B. But that B. Yes, B. Uh-huh. Okay. Project B. All right. Um, well, the nice thing is it's your letter system, so you can call it whatever you want. That's true. So as I'm working on Project B, um, I had a whole bunch of questions coming up in my mind you know, and a whole bunch of resistances. Yeah, but these doctors say this, and because <laughs> B stands for body, because <laughs> ah. it's about my body. Oh, okay. And it's like, okay, these health practitioners say th this, and these dietitians say that, and this nutritionist specialist says this, and I had all these things dancing in my head. And I've had an awareness that I really want to connect better with my body and, and, and food and movement but not in the traditional sense of I need to diet and exercise. It's like, I want a sense of vitality. Um, Good. And if food and exercise are a part of that, that's fine. But everything in me says no more dieting. And I don't, here's the funny thing. Cause if you've never been overweight, you may not know this, but even though the phrase came out years ago, it's like diets are bad. Diets don't work. No more dieting. Do you know how often people who come up with new food plans say, this is not a diet, but it is because a diet is a prescriptive, eat this food, don't eat this food, eat this, eat this many times a day, do it in these quantities. All of that is a diet. Sure. And, and it's like, I have fallen prey to all of these well-meaning people who have said, oh, but this is not a diet. But I can totally tell you what their entire prescriptive food plan is. <laughs> <laughs> and so I fell prey to that, you know, over the last couple of years as I've done several other not diet diets. Um, and so I was asking these questions like, but which one, which one? And what came to me was none of them. Absolutely none of them. 
And what I have always desired, and now this one I'm going to be more specific as I start to talk about Project B. <laughs> I'm going to this, yeah, I'm going to be more uh, transparent. I have believed for a very long time that when Abraham says, if you can come up with the idea of something you want, then the universe can deliver it. Well, here's what I want to do. Here's what I want. And this may ruffle a whole bunch of people's feathers. And I can live with that because <laughs> it's ruffled mine. But you know what? I'm no longer going to be ruffled by other people's feathers anymore. I want to eat and move my body in a way that I don't have to think or think about eating or moving my body. Mm -hmm. But that my body just knows what to do. And I'm so in sync with my body rhythms that I do what it what is requires or what it requires from me. But at the same time, did you ever watch uh, uh, Enter the Star Trek Voyager? That's what it is. Oh, yeah. There was Long a time char ago. character called Seven of Nine. She yeah. was a, uh, what was she? She was one of the Borg, wasn't she? Was she? Half, she was Borg, half human, half yeah. machine. Kind yeah. of. Well, when she came onto the Enterprise, do you remember what she used to eat? No. She did not eat in the galley kitchen with everybody else. She would go to the food replicator and she would get these things that were, I mean, you and I might think of them as supplements, but they were just nutrients. There was no flavor to them. There was no fanfare. Mm -hmm. They weren't swirled on a plate to look artistic. Mm -hmm. It was just food. Because, and she didn't understand why people went into the kitchen galley and, and the cook would make beautiful gourmet, uh, you know, pieces of artistry. Mm -hmm. And for years, I thought to myself, you know, if I could just eat the way seven of nine does, where I would just eat food, <laughs> move on and not think about it. Well, I've come into a new place in my life and I'm like, you know what? There are times that food can be so delicious and celebratory and I don't want to lose out on that. I just don't. I When I want to eat and it's for celebration and it's beautiful artistic food, I can take so much delight and pleasure in it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't feel as though I'm supposed to deny myself of that pleasure. Sure. Makes sense. But every one of these prescriptive non-diet diets all have something that you have to remove from your eating palate. Well, you can't ever have this and you can't ever have that. And then they try to tell you why cauliflower and broccoli and kale are the be all end all. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying they can't be, but I'm also saying, come on, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> and so how I want to eat in my life is where I eat because it feels good. Mm -hmm. And when it feels good, my body's delighted and it knows exactly what to do with all the food. Because my bottom line is I want to feel vital and alive. Sure. And yeah. I know there are some people that say the way you feel vital and alive is by eating this or by exercising this much or by doing this three times a week or by doing that, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I want to dump all the food rules and all the exercise rules. And I want to live in a space of just doing what feels good. And this is where I think it could ruffle other people's feathers because that's not how society is told to live. Well, if it does ruffle other people's feathers, the one message I would have for them is that they take another look at their dictionary because they'll find that definition number one of the word diet is a habitual way of eating. It doesn't say anything about removing foods. It doesn't say anything about when to eat, when to exercise. It doesn't say anything like that. It just says a habitual way of eating, and that's it. There you go. <laughs> So my project B is to start focusing on what I truly desire and what I truly want. Part of that is, is really allowing all the things that are the food rules and the movement rules to show up in my experience so I can kick them, kick them to the curb because <laughs> I don't want to live by rules anymore. I'm tired of, I've spent most of my life living by rules. Mm. I'm tired of living by rules. Isn't it amazing it too how often feel... isn't it amazing how often rules actually don't work? I mean, I mean that seriously. Well, there there are a lot of rules that simply just do not perform 
the task to produce the result that they're originally supposed to produce. They may produce some other result that people are okay with, so they keep the rule. But very often, the rules that are set don't produce the initial intended result. Well, that, and that would be synonymous with laws. Oh, laws are a definite example of that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, man-made laws. Man-made right. laws. Yeah, yeah, um, legislated laws. I, ju- I want to live happy and free. I want to live happy and free. And so Project X is moving me towards happy and free in one area of my life. And Project B it, but B for body is moving me in the direction of being happy and free in my body, with my body, for mm-hmm. my body, exuberantly with my body. And what's fascinating is <clears throat> Abraham often talks about when you want to test out law of attraction, when you want to play with it, don't work on the big, heavy things that you've wanted all your life, you know, because those are the things that have so much resistance inherent on your trail toward manifestation, that those are not easy. Those don't just manifest overnight because we have so much resistance. Mm -hmm. So I will say that my Project X and my Project B are part of a trilogy because I have one more that I haven't yet started focusing on Mm. that have been my lifelong I want. (laughs) Okay. The very thing that Abraham says, don't start there. But I will say this, I'm not just starting. I have spent 10 years working with law of attraction. I'm now at this point where I'm up for the challenge of working on the things that I've wanted for years and years and years. And it doesn't frighten me anymore. It Mm. doesn't overwhelm me anymore. It's like, oh no, we're going there. Mm -hmm. Because if law of attraction works, you know what? It's going to work on this too. And I will work my way through it. As a matter of fact, here's a funny story. Um, 12 or 14 years ago, I started working on my doctorate in metaphysics, metaphysical science. And I started, um, I, I finished my bachelor's course. Then I finished the first half of my master's course, which is the book work. Then what was left to finish it was writing a thesis. And my thesis was on the law of attraction which is ironic because back then there were no books on law of attraction. So <laughs> it makes the research you know, my difficult. <laughs> yeah, my experience in working with clients is what I was basing it on. Well, I, you know, it took me, I don't know, maybe six months to write and I was ready to submit it. I, I just had like the last part of the paper to like iron out. And I realized that I ended up with a ton of questions. Hmm. I went, you know what? The writing of this paper has actually caused me to ask deeper questions than when I started the paper. And now I don't feel like I can turn this in because to me, I just have a a whole new set of questions. So I'm going to have to live some life and see how I can get these questions answered. So I don't know how many years went by, maybe five. And, you know, in the meantime, I've been in contact with the university and they're they're fine with me taking however long I need. The nice thing when you're working with a university with metaphysics, they go, you're not the first one who's had life get in the way and require you more time. <laughs> and I'm like, yay. So I go to write the paper again. And I'm excited because now I have the, the answers to the questions that I started with. Mm-hmm. And by the time I'm just about ready to wrap up the paper, I'll be darned if the same thing doesn't happen. I now have unearthed another set of questions. Mm -hmm. So this happened three times. And I have the question on a post-it note on my computer. And the other day I went, oh, my God, I think I just have finally answered this question. So I don't know if that means I'm really ready to go back and finish my thesis. (laughs) But I noticed that there's a cyclical thing that happens. And as I've been studying law of attraction over the years, um, it's kind of like, oh, I I finally understand this. And then that thing unearths the next challenge in life. And the biggest something that my paper, my thesis opened up to me is, and here was my big question, how do you manifest something? that you've wanted for years and you have so much resistance. How do you manifest that? 
And that's actually what Project X is. I'm working on something. Project, my, three, my trilogy, my three big wants, my three big things are all things that have so much resistance, so much. And I'm finding ways to let it go, let go of the resistance and line up with the manifestation. And I'll, I'll tell you what, if for no other reason, it's not as, how do I say this? Yes, I want the manifestation of these three things. But knowing that I could accomplish it, having no, known how much resistance had been on the trail, to me is the greater satisfaction. It's interesting. You, you, you have two things here going on, two, two main concepts going on that Socrates okay. directly addressed. Oh. First of all, Socrates said, the only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. And secondly, he said, the unexamined life is not worth living. You were looking at exactly both things, because as you answer one set of questions, wait a minute, there's a whole bunch more questions. And then you answer a whole bunch more questions, <laughs> and there's a whole bunch more questions. And you're doing it all through how? Through examining your own life. Yeah. Pretty cool. I truly feel <laughs> like the greatest gift that I can give humanity is the answer to Manif manifesting something in an area that you have been so disappointed in over and over and over. Because that's what my life has been. Mm. I've tried really hard to manifest things and have been disappointed over and over. And I'm, I'm done with that one. <laughs> I'm done with that pattern. I am so done with that pattern. I hear you. Because I hear, I hear Abraham talk about things. You know, I don't know if you've ever heard them say this one, but they haven't done it in a while, but they'll talk about how the reality of whatever it is that you desire, your inner being is holding. It's done. It's done. It's done. This is what they do. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. As in, it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Do you get the point? It's <laughs> yes. done. It's done. It's done. And, you know, I laughed at that for years that I would hear them say that. And I would even quote that back to clients and go, it's done. And I would say it a hundred times, you know. But the reality of me personally believing the doneness of something that I desire when I'm not seeing it in manifested form has been the new challenge that I have been willing to undertake. Very cool. I'm willing cool. to find the energetic place of the doneness and stop focusing so hard on the undoneness of it. Well, because this, I truly do believe with my whole being that that which I cannot see can be as more real to me as that which I do see. And that's a great insight because that's where we all want to be. I just want to mention that uh, this episode of Project X has been brought to you by the LOA Today Show, where you can subscribe and share, and we'd love you to do that. So please take the time to do that. <laughs> and that's serious, even though how you said that was very clever and cute. <laughs> but this has been good. I mean, I, I love the way you opened up. I hope this has been useful and helpful to listeners. I know it's been interesting to me and helpful to me because you are getting very, very close to the point where a lot of us have been working for for a long time. So, I mean, uh, you, you have a lot of listeners who are like hanging on every word to find out, is this all going to work out the way that we're hoping it's going to work out? And I'm beginning to think, yeah, it's going to. So thank you for sharing. <laughs> well, and if it doesn't happen, there's no reason to go on with this show. Well, then that's it. You, you, you've just heard it here, folks. I mean, if, if it doesn't happen, then this show is shutting down April 2nd. So... <laughs> 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 no, not really. April Fool. So <laughs> no, it, it's happening because it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. All right. Well, then we'll just have to wait till tomorrow to find out what the latest Project X update is. We may even get to back to the book Law of Attraction. Who knows? But Who if knows? we don't know, that's okay. And you know what, Walt? This show is done. <laughs> this show is done. <laughs> well, with that word, Wendy, it's been a pleasure as usual. Let's do it again tomorrow. All righty. <laughs> we'll see you all next time here on LMA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye now.